This is how most of my projects used to start. Basic structure, static elements. Yeah, nothing wrong, but nothing exciting either. But then I discovered something. Something that brought them to life. I started with a simple div element and want to add an animation like this. Just a simple one. But I want this animation to happen when the box scrolls onto the screen. For that, first I need to detect the page scroll. So I am going to add a scroll event listener. When I am scrolling, I want to know whether the box is on the screen or not. For that, first I will find the distance from the top. If the top distance is less than the window height, then the box is inside the screen, so we can set the CSS properties. Else, set back to default. Looks like a pretty good progress. But there is a problem. The animation is happening as soon as the box touches the screen. To fix this, I will just subtract some value from the window's height. Great. Looks like the animation is happening when the box scrolls up to a threshold value. Finally, if I remove this else part, the animation happens only once while scrolling the page. But JavaScript provides an even more comfortable way to do this, using the intersection observer. Start by creating a new observer, and add a function that takes all the elements to be observed as its argument. So, outside the function, we can actually assign the box element to be observed by the intersection observer. Ideally, this argument will now have an array with a JSON object in it, and in this JSON, I might just need the isIntersecting property and the target property. And if more elements are added to the observer, all of those elements will be included in this array. We want to apply an animation to each element. So let's go ahead and iterate over them. And if an element is intersecting, we'll apply the animation. Otherwise, we'll remove it. Okay. I can see the animation effect here, but I don't want the animation to happen so immediately. Fortunately, the intersection observer provides a property called root margin. Now this root margin is kind of like the CSS margin property. But instead of adding space, it actually shrinks each side of the intersecting area before computing intersections. And when I apply it, there it is, the animation.